Okay, I thought we'd jump in. <clears throat> I just have uh, a tangent to go on. <clears throat> what is required to apprehend or come to know each one of these things? Is it the same or something different? So, uh, starting off, would you agree I'm talking about uh, <clears throat> 28A? Would you go along and say on... Uh, in this text, it calls it uh, thought with the aid of reasoning, but we know that the text is uh, better, which we can call intellect and logos. Is that fair? <clears throat> the fact that this is news and this is logos? Uh, correct. And that's what I say. There is no. not a better answer. The answer oh, is there's no. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, look here. Um, what would you say about the uh, paradigm? Because his gaze is fixed on it, would you agree? His Zeus, the Demiurgos, his gaze is fixed on it <coughs> in the entire process. Now that means I'm at uh, 29 AD, would you agree? So having in this wise come into existence, it has been constructed after the pattern of that which is apprehensible by reason and thought. But we looked at the Greek and said, by heavens, that's logos and phrenesis. Agree? Mm -hmm. And this is a word that uh, is seldom translated uh, philosophically, phronesis. So we'll just spell it out. Right. Uh. <clears throat> Would you agree the whole story of the time is uh, comes down to trying to uh, give an account, give a cause at uh, 30 C. Would you agree with that? The cause, the cause for these, what is it he's trying to explain to all the work that he's doing? What is that for which all of this work is being done? Would you agree on, uh, as we went over it at 30, uh, 30 to, we could so call it uh, uh, 29E to 30C. Uh, what is it we're looking at? 
this cosmos has truly come into existence as a living creature endowed with what? Beauty. Soul. Mm -hmm. What was the word? Soul. I'm, I'm at uh, page 55 in the low. And, uh, You're really talking about last. perfectly, everything being perfectly beautiful. And, uh, Endowed with soul perfectly. and and news, owing to the providence of God. That, that's one of the ones. It's and news. Yes, right? yes. And therefore, what is it? Intelligence, mind. Intelligence, mind. Uh, this, therefore, the goal of this is to show the providence of God. Why? Because we have in our soul, right? News. Right? Intellect. Therefore, look here. Therefore, we have the faculty to know being if we understand what he means by this. If we understand this, then we we'll always have to figure out what he means by phronesis. Ah. Now look at one more couple of steps. Um, um, now, um, why does he introduce yet another term See at 34, maybe we're jumping ahead too fast, but uh, um, but it's good to do that for the moment. See, here he's using in English the same word. And let me just read it for you. Midway between the being which is indivisible and remains always the same and the being which is transient and divisible in bodies, he blended a third form of being. Being, 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 being. Right? And, uh, but this, has, this really is a word he's introducing that is this word, Usia. Of course. Of course. Now, why does he keep changing these? And are they different? Um, because you see, these two things come together, produce the soul. This is the soul. Being the same, being this divisible, together, he mixes this up. And that mixture is soul. Well, <clears throat> And why does he do this? Now, um, the last time we were here, you volunteered the notion that the idea of Usia is uh, we've encountered before. It's uh, that property which allows us to turn about and see ourselves. Come back in. Uh, recursive, right? Recursive, turns upon itself. So this is the idea of being with this feature in it, or stressing this feature. Look here, watch now, terrible principle.
as something functions, so it is. You see, uh, there isn't any difference between being and the paradigm, or the model in the mind of God in the creation of the universe. But it functions differently, and therefore if it functions differently and you want to understand it, then you have to know how to apprehend the way it's functioning. We together? Some, the same thing can take on various functions. Agree? And if you want to apprehend the way in which it functions, you have to be able to identify that function to be able to understand it, or you won't be able to understand it or see it. So look here, see? That's what we have here. There isn't any difference among these things. It's all the same. They function differently, see? First step being, right? Oh, by the way, when the demiurgos looks upon it for a model, then now he's talking about it, talking about this as a model. Theoretically, there may be other things other than its capacity as a model. <coughs> he's only focusing on it for the purpose of the model. And therefore, even though it's the same thing, it's functioning differently, and therefore, if you want to understand it, grasp but you have to see how it's functioning and match the way it functions to see it. <laughs> Clever? Clever. Is there no difference whatsoever between the essence and the function? Pardon, sir? Is there a difference between the essence of being and the function of being? Oh, sure. Get it. Well, it seems like the essence of being is being itself without respect to other. You can put the word self in there, itself, but uh, uh, would you agree he's now using being, what is being? Theologically, right? Here's God, right? And he's focusing on <coughs> the idea in the mind of God in order to produce the universe. <whistles> Cosmos, copy. This is a copy of that. This is the model. What's the difference between the idea and the mind of God and God? Right, this is God. But it's functioning, it, right? So he's fixing his mind. He fixes his gaze on it. Now it functions differently. Then we're going to need another another word. Sure. So if they're the same, what accounts for the difference in function? If they're the same, Plato is going to use a different word in order to keep in mind its different function. No, but what accounts for the different function? Pardon? What accounts? For its different function? What accounts for it? The way in which it... Uh, Wait, the so they're the same. Oh, pardon. What accounts for the way in which it functions? The goal. Purpose. But, but I don't if think if they're, the, if they're the same... Yeah. Where does the difference come so that they can function differently? Purpose. Purpose. Well, I put it in theological language and see whether it makes sense. Uh, whatever you're going to call God, or the demiurgos, right? <clears throat> if we can talk about it in terms of time, just as an example, <clears throat> he fixes his gaze on the model, now it's now. Now there is something in God that He's singling out to achieve that purpose. Now ask your question again. What determines the function, the purpose? What's the purpose? The whole work. 
to show the providence of God. Now you have to sharpen your question so I can see if I can, we can push it further. You might want to let him go to the second of the functions. Sure, no problem. Well, I was saying, we were going to demonstrate several different functions, sure. right, from looking at it from different, four different reasons and from different points of view. So I was suggesting to Nabuya, either he can refine his question now, or we could look at another function and see if we could answer his question with respect to that. Another function of, here we have the model, and here we have providence of God. Mm -hmm. And here we have, well, you see it? <clears throat> um, yes. I, I just want to say, I can't go any further until I get the question clearer. Okay. And, uh, and he'll work on it. And uh, I appreciate it, and I'd like to hear it. See, <clears throat> here's the problem. If this is the goal, this is the goal, then everything is in terms of it. That determines function. Hmm. And even though the uh, <coughs> analogy is misstated in, uh, in the work, uh, he does give that great analogy, doesn't he? Which is nothing other than explaining this idea. to uh, <clears throat> a Jared D. Long question of uh, sentence. Pick it up from the beginning. Uh, 29B to the middle of C. On page 53. And the load. <clears throat> Again, if these premises be granted, it is wholly necessary that this cosmos should be a copy of something. Now, to grasp this whole idea of providence, you need to keep your mind on these words, right? And tell me how often you say it. And variations of these three words. Sorry. <clears throat> Accordingly, in dealing with a copy and its model, we must affirm that the accounts given will themselves be akin to the diverse objects which they serve to explain those which deal with what is abiding and firm and discernible by the, by the aid of Logos will be abiding and unshakable insofar as it's possible and fitting for statements to be irrefutable, invincible, they must in no wise fall short thereof. Whereas the accounts of that which is copied after, the, after uh, that model or, or of the model let me do that again, please. They must in no wise fall short thereof, whereas the accounts of that which is copied after the likeness of that model and is itself a likeness will be analogous thereto and possess likelihood. For as being is to be coming, truth is to believe. How many words in there did you find that we can put in the same class? Right, copied. Five. Likeness. Likeness. Right? Whole bunch. Agree? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, see, if our goal is this, if this is the principle 
See, a lot of people think it's a cosmology, isn't it? It's only secondarily a cosmology. It's showing the providence of God. That's why he's writing it. That's what he says he's doing. Therefore, looking at that analogy, how does the analogy go, Barbara? Hmm. Well, as being is to No, no, look at the other side of the page. Oh. <clears throat> If someone has it, you can jump in. Let's see. Okay. It actually is it's very weird, isn't it? Hmm. Um, it looks like as Lucia is to generation. Well, make sure. Make sure. So is. So is truth. No. Okay. Yes. I mean, I think it's as Lucia is to uh, generation, so is truth to well, faith, belief, pistis in any case. So you have Lucia okay. is to genesis. Okay. It's essential, it's essential however, okay, that uh, <coughs> we take a look at this. Mm -hmm. Everyone agrees? I would have, take another translation, can. please. Other translations, quick. Could these be switched? Could which be switched? Um, Could generation come first? No, sir. Any other translation, please? Doesn't Who's got one? Doesn't say it here. Is this a translation of uh, uh, Thomas Taylor? Are these yours? Uh, yes, but that's not it. This not. is a Taylor here. Yeah, okay. good. But I can't, I can't find exactly what we're talking about. Uh, the word exa exactly. It's a good, good, good idea to make it work. I think so too. <laughs> I was looking for what I couldn't. He has, and indeed, as essence is to generation, so is truth to faith. Yeah. Okay. He takes who see as essence. Yes. Okay. Which is maybe a worthwhile thing to remind ourselves of. <coughs> Go along with that? Yeah. Right. This is first, this is second, this is first, this is second? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. is to generate. So there's truth to faith. As pistis is to aletheia. <coughs> uh, why is that transposed, Barbara? Uh, well, you, do you see it? Um, it says pros. Yeah. Tuto pros piston aletheia. Yeah. So well, could someone argue it's it's a generation to a sea as pistis is to truth? Uh, hmm. Hmm? Well, um, one would want one could say, for example, what um, what it uh, pros. Yeah. What two gener? Hmm, how would that be done? The order. It looks like the emphasis is. That's the meaning of. The, there's an emphasis there. But well, how yeah. would we put it in English? That, um, that which is to that which is to generation is Lucia. So this. So. If so, so then this would turn around. Yeah. Definitely, the emphasis would turn. They, right. Yeah, they, right. They want. They right. could look at right. it that way. Right. 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 Now, it may, you know, uh, yeah. 
if we're if we're dealing with a gentleman who is um, playing with words, you see, and with a certain precision, and if we look at this, um, what kind of analogy is that? Because this is what we're talking about. Well, here. <clears throat> ah, let me put this back up in a minute. If you are interested in understanding the higher term, if you're interested in finding something that you can compare it with. So this is the object, this is what you're seeking to understand it. Like the Republic <coughs> uh, is uh, you must discover the nature of the soul, and <clears throat> uh, and the parts of the soul. Right, that's the Republic. And Socrates says, "Hey, you know, if this uh, image of the state doesn't turn out to be successful." We'll drop it and get something else because we're interested in this. This is the interesting thing we want to find out about because we want to see what effect justice has on the soul and injustice, the effect it has on the soul. And therefore, if our example of using the state or the city state and it's uh, classes. So whatever I want to find out about this, all the things that I think that are essential to the soul, whatever they are, I must find something that has, and that can be said to be analogous to each one of these, or I pick the wrong thing. Agree? Not the wrong time. Now, you either can look at the lesser or the greater. Agree? This is the greater, this is the lesser. Right? Or this is the high, and this is the low. Or the greater and the lesser. I'll put greater and lesser. Of these two, this is the greater, that's the lesser. <clears throat> now, what is significant about this? <clears throat> why, why not turn it around and put this first, this second, the way we had it a moment ago? So what? Oh, uh, wait a moment. Um, I'm puzzled about politics. I want to know how a ruler relates to his subjects. You know, he may, we may be able to find similar terms here. Uh, a doctor to his patients. Um, A shepherd to his sheep, pastoral. Whatever it is that we're going to use here is to clarify this. Well, then let me give you an analogy and you tell me what you see in it, all right? 
Um, let's use this this language A B C D, and um, the higher, the greater, would be Usia. The lesser would be generation. Uh, truth. Believe. Now wait a while. I think you switched. We could also say, could we not? Usia or essence is to truth as generation is to belief. Right. So, if we uh, want to play this, let's do it, all right? Um, That's right. Yeah, let me just write this out, then I can quit. Probably taking too much time already, but um, um, see, Usia, ultimate reality, can. Uh, in, implicit in it is the property of truth. So this really should be we see it, our essence is to truth <coughs> as belief is to generation. Uh, as part of generation, generation is to belief. Is to belief. That's what it should be. Right. Now, therefore, he's putting it in terms of CD, you see, he's putting it in terms of C, right, is to A, right? Uh, as B is to D. Right. Now that's a very interesting analogy, right? There are eight transformations of a four-term analogy. What is peculiar about this one? Well, let's try it over here and do it, all right? A doctor, or take the shepherd. Um, a shepherd right, is to a ruler right, as subjects are to sheep. Right, are to sheep. Now, would you please tell me what that might mean? How is a shepherd to a ruler the way subjects are to sheep? Well, they both have leaders. The, sub the subject and the sheep both have leaders, <coughs> something that they must follow. So the shepherd rules, rules over the sheep as the ruler does over the subjects. They have they have something they follow. Each is because of the other. Oh, it's like a it's like a slave owner and a slave. Yeah. One cannot exist without the other. Right. Well, the problem is that it's to a is to B it's a bad analogy, analogy. right? Yeah. Converse. Yeah, hold on. B is to A, D is to C. Alternando. <clears throat> right? Converse of the alternando. Right. Um, alternando on the converse. Right. And of course it's converse. 
You see, we have uh, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. A C B D. C A D B. Did I screw up? Wait a minute. Do it again. Ultranando. A C B D. Right. Converse of the Ultranando. C A D B. Right. Uh, Ultranando of the Converse. B D A C. Right. Uh, D B. Converse. A C. Right. C D A B. C D A D. D C D A. So tell me. That one is the B D A C. Excuse me. That one doesn't work. Which one? B D A C. Tell me the number. Okay, no, that works. That one doesn't. I may be going too fast. <coughs> no, it did work. C A B D doesn't work. Right, but C A B D. I don't think it's in the text. Which one are you talking about? Was this the one? No, no. Are oh, these all right? Those are all right. I'm okay. Sorry. But the, the one now we check this one, all right? Uh, this is the way it should be, A, B, C, D. Therefore, hmm. this should be... Uh, C, right? C, I... It should be D, B, C, D, B. Believe this to truth. Right. Believe this to truth. And that's what you have in the Greek. You have belief is to truth. Pa pardon me? You do have belief is to truth in the Greek. You have generation is to asia. As oh, is this truth. is wrong. Oh, yeah. of course. Of you clicked course. one, but you didn't ah, click the other. Ah, thank you. Ah. <laughs> ah. Thank you. Stay there. thought you did that on purpose, Pierre. Oh, that, thank you. That's, that saves the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now look here. If we had it straight, how would we do it? Say, a shepherd is to a sheep, as a ruler is to subjects, take the lesser form first. Would you agree? Uh, care, nurture, uh, protect, uh, lead, lead to pastures, right? That would be the way in which a shepherd relates to a sheep. In a similar, not the same way, a ruler takes care of his subjects, protects them, right? So therefore, if you hold on to that, what kind of relationship could you find here? Well, that was based on the other the analogy that we changed, right? Okay. Well, let's just make sure we have it right, for me. Shouldn't it be sheep is to subjects? Pardon me? Shouldn't it be sheep is to subjects? Yes. Yes, yes, thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. Um. Sheep is to subjects. One call. This, this is an easier form to say. Yeah. Ah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what do you see here? What would that be? Is it difficult to visualize? Mm -hmm. That's it right. Mm -hmm. Try it. What would it be? 
See, he's picking, he's picking this one. It's kind of Each one has its virtues and its shortcomings. Um. Well, doesn't the, the shepherd and ruler is the sheep subject? Um, that's not an analogy in terms of relationships, but it's a simile. A shepherd is like a ruler. Like you, the caretaking and protection comes out of It's not about the shepherd's relationship to the ruler, but just what... Uh, aren't okay. you just talking about their Or you could say that it's, an, it's the two higher terms with relationship to the two lower, right? That's so right. to speak. Yeah. And doesn't it emphasize that? And in a way, it dramatizes the uh, double colon, the relationship mm -hmm. word, right? Mm -hmm. Or focuses it mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. How's that? Well, I mean, what you're looking at is the two. In this analogy, you're looking at the two ruling terms are to the two, are to the two subject terms, so to mm -hmm. speak, right? That's right. So doesn't that, in a way, emphasize what is that relationship between uh, ruling terms and subject terms? Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, let me sh watch now. That's right. One Look way at of talking about. It. No, no, that's right. Look her. Therefore, shift back to this. What kind of relationship would you say must exist then between these two? Hmm. That's a good question. Okay. Because this work is going to play continuously on these terms. Mm -hmm. That's right. Model copy relationship. Would you agree that's the very set of terms we need to explain the relationship between generation and essence? Generation is a copy. Right. 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 Or it resembles in some way. Mm -hmm. There's a certain kind of likeness. There's a certain kind of imitation. Is that equally true here? Yes. Is the relationship between belief and truth? Yeah. One, One is... It? It's a... Distorted copy or something? Yes. Yes, it's true. Shadow. Oh. 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 Now, wait a minute. Go back to providence. What do you have to show with providence? What's providence? Beneficial. Some goodness. Some goodness coming mm -hmm. forth. Some yeah. goodness that follows from <coughs> the divine mm -hmm. to the cosmos. Mm -hmm. Right? So therefore, what he's good trying to do is this. Hmm. Showing the reflection back. Go from the model to it. The he's going to spend all the... his time in the book, uh -huh. only touching lightly on this. But the whole book is going to be about this. Therefore, he's moving from. The generation, generation, generation to, to essence, essence. Generation to essence. and therefore this analogy is well stated this way. Hmm. Interesting. And it's the most difficult one in terms of trying to understand structures of analogy because the relationship is so weak. Mm -hmm. Like he's a ruler and he's a ruler, mm -hmm. but the gap between them is considerable. Mm -hmm as there is a gap between sheep and subjects, mm -hmm. unless, of course, you're talking about Republicans. Indeed. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that. Right? <laughs> yeah. Especially in Wyoming. So, I was just wondering, if you, look, if you ask yourself, well, what is the relationship between, as generation is to see us so to belief is to truth, is belief in, are belief and truth the mode of apprehension? Are they the way of seeing or knowing? Or are they the cognitive state that results? Cognitive states that follow. Follow each, on each side. That's right. So they're looking at the And, and therefore, this is impossible. Right. Right? This is therefore fraudulent. Yeah, yeah. Right? There's no point in having a belief about Usia or truth about generation. Mm -hmm. That's what he says. I can only give a likely account, mm -hmm. right? When we're talking about truth, <laughs> truth must always be this way. Mm -hmm. And so this 
contingent likeliness, best to give a possible a likeness. Right? So, uh, this is a, uh, this is, uh, okay, therefore, would you not agree, every time we see these terms, he's following this model. And if he is, then we have to make the connection. Going backwards. So we can learn more about the divine or the nature of the source of providence that is extending providence to man. Hmm. Hmm. So, uh, if we want to uh, now go back to where we were, take this off now? No. No, I, I had one in my pocket. There it is. Now he's introducing another word, right? And in one translation he calls it essence. That's a good word for the difference because that even is spelled differently than being. Yeah. <laughs> But other translations call it being. They don't make this <laughs> distinction. But we're saying this is two different kinds of we say it, <clears throat> right? Um, this is impartable, no possible parts. And parts. And this is partable, right? This is transient. This is always. And to mix these two, he uses usia, or being, or essence, depending upon what translation you have. And that becomes third part soul. See, now we now the question we had is is there any reason why he's using that term? Is there anything in the work that allows us to keep using this term as if it means something? And the quote you had you used last time we were here? You got the quote? Not handy. Not handy? But you'll bring it up, because I, I know that. Okay, 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 okay. But I can see where your function is going, because each you see it has a different <clears throat> function under its, own, under its own providence, you might say. Well, um, as it functions, that's what it is. Yes. By the way, then, <laughs> the way in which this intelligent living creature called the, the uh, paradigm it then creates a model of the living creature that includes us because we have noose, we have intellect. Now look here, how does he describe this? I'm at 34A. For movement, 
I'm at just about 34A, page 63. For movement is signed unto it that which is proper to its body, namely, that one of the seven motions, which especially belongs to uh, good old Noose, uh, whereupon he spun it round uniformly in the same spot and within itself. Got those words? Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm-hmm. Noose and phronesis. Noose and phronesis was all I was... Yes. I, it just took me a minute. I was yeah, excuse sure. me. They're quite right. Noose and phronesis. We know the way in which news and phrenesis move. move. Yes. Ah. <laughs> That's the very property of essence or usia. Mm -hmm. It turns around, it turns upon itself. Mm -hmm. right. In order to have a profound experience, right? What do we mean by a profound experience? Allowing the intellect to turn upon itself so the mind can know the mind. But that's usia, that's turning about. Right? On a spot, on itself, within itself. <whistles> Bang. And that's the very property of the movement of nous and usia. Nous, pardon me, nous and pronations. And then that thing, the, the universe, then becomes a blessed God. From this then, right, if this is the kind of property that's essential, to new synchronesis, and that's the particular quality of being, therefore it's functioning in this way, no name, who <coughs> see So as we go on, we can watch that, and you'll see that it repeats itself as we go on. Uh, just one more point. Um, and now, these terms change their meaning to same and other. Right, so there we have the same thing. What becomes same and other? These two, one, this becomes same, this becomes other. From now on, he's not going to use this language, he's going to use same and other. It's the same thing. But since it's functioning in a different way, he's going to name it in a different language, and he's going to continue building. Sir? Why is that important? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I should let him finish. <laughs> Why is Please. it important that he divides same and other into essence and... Why is it important that he changes it? No, that he divides those two... Terms, places. same and other? Yes. Well... Have we not worked on uh, Tata Tau Tau? I just wanted to hear you talk about it. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> Come on, you talk about it. Come on. No, 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 no. You've been here. I'm working the camera, so. <laughs> Come on. Maybe Barbara will talk about it. No, not, not your question, no. It wasn't half a question. Yes, pardon me. Did you have a question? I saw your pencil. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. Could you briefly clarify the difference between Newt and Logos? 
Sure. Uh, the English word intellect, right, in the highest use of the term, should mean the eye of the soul that allows man to gain an insight into the divine. Only. Now, it's also used flippantly, intellectual intellect, but the proper use of the term is this higher. Therefore, a noose is intellect. And logos uh, is really central, and that's such an important question. You see, um, he's saying, um, you can you can grasp the nature of this pure being, but you can only do it if you awaken intellect with logos. Now, uh, uh, every tradesman has a logos. A carpenter has a logos. A plumber has a logos. The body of knowledge that he has. Uh, anyone who has a, a system within themselves and has, has brought it together, they got a logos. So the question in the Republic is, what is Socrates' as logos? And he brings that up and it takes him five books to explain it. It's his whole vision that can include in itself everything into a unity that allows man to be understood as a creature that can go from Hades to heaven, as he calls it. Uh, now, why is that important here? Because the time is, is a logos. The whole thing is, is a logos, a way of understanding. It. That means total understanding. Proclus has the, uh, a beautiful quote uh, about Logos in this respect. He says, um, Logos dances around, the in, dances around being and therefore can grasp, can grasp it to the degree it's possible for Logos to grasp it. So as Logos dances around news or being, and in that way, it's a way of grasping being, but it needs the total insight of intellect or news to directly perceive it without such intermediaries. But you need the intermediary linked with this for this perception. So, here, so the, the way logos is used here means more than, say, an account. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a man. Yeah, um, only some people have a logos. Only someone who can, like in a republic, I mentioned, you know, the, like the Simicus has it. A tyrant has a logo. If Socrates has a logo, that's embracing that to explain his philosophy. Therefore, it took analogies, divided line, <coughs> allegory, training the philosophy theme, the five states of, uh, of the soul, symbolic understanding of 729, and the number of Socrates. This is a fun one, isn't it, though, this, this analogy, this one, trying to figure this one out? And yet, and yet, that's it, isn't it? All it is is a copy. Right? Certainly, the skill of a shepherd, not many shepherds compete to be rulers. Of course, we had a uh, cattle rancher who was good at raising cattle, became a president of the United States. And we let him off because he's a criminal. <laughs> since he broke the law, changed the law, underwrote the Constitution, all of that stuff we know. By the way, there's a great show on uh, TV. I was able to capture it. They're going over 9-11 now. And, uh, gee, it was a nice documentary. Really? Yeah, all it said from the beginning to end was, you know what? Someone did it. Yep. So I said, I know how That was something. Woo! Four days, <laughs> molten <laughs> steel filled the basement of a tower that wasn't hit by one of the planes. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it's still holding a melter. Six seconds. Anyhow. <coughs> ah, enough. What do you say? Time to quit? Good job. Thank you. Did I take you off on a, on a tangent on this? Uh, uh.